In this video, I'll be covering what's new in monthly data entry in version 7.6.6. I've already logged into the Rocky Creek tutorial, and I'm going to go ahead and pull up my DMR review form. So it loads up this form. It looks very similar to the old version. Uh, a couple things here is uh, I don't like the way this looks. I'm not sure this was new in 766, but I'm going to go down here and where it says select mode, I'm going to double click and go to drag and drop mode because I want to take this column and rearrange it. So I'm just dragging and dropping it just to get all my affluence together. And then when I'm done with that, I can leave it in drag and drop mode or I can put it back into select mode, which means I highlight the whole column. So one thing I want to do is I want to look at uh, my audit trail data. I know I've, we've had some trouble with flow. So as I click through these cells, notice right here it says edited now down in the status bar. So if I click on this 2.6, it is not, and then this one is edited. So what that is telling me is that data has been entered and then subsequently changed. The, the value has changed. We also have this border edited off. So by default, it is off. And if I turn it on, what it will do is it will highlight those cells that have been edited with a blue, a light blue border. So we know that data has been entered and then, like I said, subsequently changed. There's three statuses you can have. And by double clicking on it, I change it. So this says border edited all. This is highlighting a calculation. has The data has changed for it. Sometimes you don't want to see the calculations because if you change a couple numbers, sometimes all the calculations become blue. So it may become uh, bothersome to you, so you can leave it at border edited parameters. So now just data that is changed by a user, not by the calc engine, is highlighted. If I go and I click on this 2.6, now that I know that it's edited, and I go to my audit trail, what you'll see is that data was inserted as a negative one, which would be a very strange flow and then the user came along and changed it to 2.6 and then there's a third record here where data it says it's modified where the approval level was changed so the blue bordered will not show data approval changes because that's not a change to the data and that is the normal workflow data is entered and in this case it was approved if we're using data approval so if I look at the very next value here and I go to the audit trail there it has two records but it wasn't in blue because all that happened was the three was entered and then it was approved, which is a normal state. So that's border edited. And when I save the layout, however I leave my border edited parameters or my border edited setting, it will be saved. So the next time I come bring this form up, these cells, any edited data will be highlighted or bordered in blue. Next, I'm going to enter some data, let's say for a BOD, and I'll enter in a seven on this Saturday. So I hit enter and it takes it. If I come back here and I erase that value, I delete it because I'm not supposed to take BODs on the weekend, so I entered it on the wrong day. If I clear it out, notice that that deletion also is shown. So a blank cell means that data was entered and then it was deleted. And again, I can see this in the audit trail. Next, one of the big features that we have in 766 in monthly data entry is the ability to add lab cal and additional info fields as columns into the form. So how you would bring that up is when I'm in the column that I want to see let's say the additional info fields for I'm gonna go ahead and right click and right here you'll see additional info I can show that additional info in a floating window or I can add as a column now so I'm gonna go add as a column and I'm gonna go ahead and add in the uh, MDL and the sample number and click OK. And so what that does is it, it uh, inserts these two variables, but you'll notice as I click, the color is orange, indicating that it is an additional info field. It tells instead of the units, this is the BOD MDL, this is the BOD sample number. So typically this data would be imported like from a LIMS interface, but you could go in here and enter this data in. So I can say my MDL is two on that day, and my sample number is 1706-26-03, let's say. So as soon as I enter the data, it's saved. It's just like any other variable or any other column 
in monthly data entry. The data is there. If I save this layout, these fields will still be displayed in the, uh, in the new form. I can also do the same thing with LabCal. So with LabCal info, I go to it, I can display the sample that just pops up the window and lets me look at the whole sample, or I can add the, the fields into the form. This brings up a window where you can choose the LabCal fields that you want to add into this form as columns. Let me go ahead and choose sample date, analysis start, analysis end, analyze by, and go ahead and click OK. And those fields or columns are added into the form. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all these columns, drag them a little wider so I can see a little bit more information here. So what it tells me is that the green means that it's a LabCal field, and I've got the sample date time right here. So on this day, June 1st, I took the sample at 8.02 a.m. That comes right from your LabCal data. It's already been entered, and somebody's entered in the analysis start time and here's the analysis end time and uh, Mr. Dorner here, that's me, uh, analyze that data. So if I want to enter in data for another day here, I can just come in here and click. And One of the things is I can type in the date. I also have this default button. What it does is it helps me actually get the format right. So when I click this it will default the data. So it'll type in the current time. Now the current time is not what I want. So I'm going to go ahead and edit this and make, I actually started analyzing this on 6-2 at 9.58 a.m., analysis end. And here I can pull down and choose a uh, person or I can click default again. So this uses the new LabCal feature where you can link a username to a personnel. So I'm logged in and as super and that's linked to the Scott Dorner person account, so if I click it, it knows that I mean Scott Dorner. So it's going to link it to essentially who is logged in. So I can go ahead and enter this data, and this data goes right into LabCal. So if I pull up that sample, that data is going to be there. So next, uh, somebody asks me uh, what the average is for the week of the 5th for my BOD. What I can do here is if I just highlight those cells, in the lower right corner, it's always going to show me the average, sum, min, max, geometric mean, and count of whatever I have highlighted. So again, if I highlight these three data points, or I highlight these five, I'm going to get those statistics in the lower right corner. Next, I want to talk about the new colors that uh, we're using to highlight entry limit violations and daily regulatory violations. So right here, I'm on my Influent Flow. And I've got a limit of 22.2. So if I type in a 23 here, I go ahead and hit enter. And a couple things happen. One is it says 23 is outside of the entry range. And notice it says high flow need to bypass. So this is the custom message that is set up in variable edit now. So when you design your entry limits, you can enter in a custom message. You don't have to. Uh, what that means is you'll just get the default message that would be 23 is outside the entry range. But if you want to put op, uh, instructions to your operators or to the people entering the data, maybe they need to resample or check it, you can put those messages in here. Works the same as always. If I click yes, it's going to accept that entry. But now it's going to make it yellow. And we also highlighted the entry min and max labels as yellow so you could link those up so you know that that means it's an entry violation. Next, I look at this 46 right here. If I click on it, you'll notice that it is in red. That's above the daily limit. So red, light red means it's above the limit. Light yellow means it's above the entry limit. If a value is above both the entry limit and the, the regulatory limit, we will highlight it in red because we feel like the daily violation or the regulatory violation is more important. Also, if I click back on this cell, remember it had that custom message. If I can't remember what that custom message is, if I click back on the cell, it will show me the message. 23 is outside the entry range, high flow, and you need to bypass. Okay, so you can go back and see what those messages are. Another thing that we've added is if you're going to force an entry for a day, best practices says that we want you to also enter in a result comment. So now when I go to force, I can do this in one step. It says I want to force the value. Let's say I want to make it 5,555 pounds, and I can put in a comment right here to say why I forced it. 
uh, flow was estimated, so I forced whatever your message would be. This is optional. You don't have to enter it in. You're not forced to, um, but it's best practices when you're forcing a number. Before, you'd have to force it in and then right-click again and go back to um, entering your result comments. We just made that a little easier to use. Next, I want to talk about the quick trend. So if I'm on a variable, let's say BOD here, and I click the quick trend button, this right here, display a quick trend graph, it works like it always did. Now, so I can take this window, and I can move it around, maybe make it a little smaller, kind of put it in this right-hand corner here, and I can say, well, I want to see this graph, let's say, year to date. So there's my data year to date, and it works just like anything else. But what's nice is if I leave this graph open, if I don't close this window, and now I click on flow, I instantly, the graph changes to whatever variable on. So I can go through quickly and see some trends and just leave this window up. If I have multiple monitors, I can drag this quick graph onto the other screen, and it makes it very convenient, kind of gives you a, a very nice trend of data that you can see just by clicking around, leaving it up. At any time, you can just close the window, and then the quick trend is off. Now, I'm going to go ahead, since I like this, I got the, uh, I want to turn my border edited back on, and I'm going to go to File and Save Layout. So next time I pull this form up, I'll have both my lab cal fields and my additional info fields display because that's the way I wanted to do it. Another thing that we've added here is file new. So this allows you to design a new form when you're using it. So I can just come in here and say new before I'd have to go back to design to create a new form. So I click new, it pulls up the variable browser, and I could just, let's say I want to look at everything in Influent, I just go ahead and click add, and there's my new form all ready to go. Notice it says new form. I, haven't, I have to save this layout if I want to keep it, but I could just use this very quickly. I want to look at all my Influent data, close it out. That form is not saved, um, only if I save the layout. So it's a way I can quickly create new forms and or just quickly browse some data that I don't have a form for. So that's what's new in monthly data entry. Thank you.